Alright guys, in this video I'm showing you my upstairs bathroom as it looked when we moved in. It was in complete need of a gut job and renovation. So right away I ripped most of the bathroom stuff out, the toilet, the sink, the shower. It's all old oak. I just didn't like it. Alright, in this picture you can see the toilet or the shower was leaking and it turned out that the shower was actually bursted the water lines behind the wall. Alright, just took the walls off of this shower and this is where my leak was. Right here and right there. Look at that. Alright. The upstairs bathroom is being demolished. Two layers of vinyl floor and a veneer. I got stuck down there. The sheetrock I took off because it doesn't have any insulation. I'm gonna put insulation back there. And you can see a big hole down to the bottom floor right there. All right, start on the, ba the upstairs bathroom project here. And it's been gutted, the floor's been gutted out, some of the walls. First thing I did was take some pipe insulation and ran it on my cold and hot all the way as far as I could go. And next thing I wanna put some half inch plywood down. I fixed any needed repairs in the base wood which is a one by sixes. Alright so the pipes fit in there nice and nice and good there. And now to make the toilet hole here I just measured from here 12 inches to the flange then 19 and a half past it and then just mark where the tip is on the wall. When you put it down you could just put a level on there. And mark it and then you just take a little flange they sell these at Home Depot put it where the marks are in between and you know where your circle is to cut it all right and there's the hole for the toilet flange and that's the tool I used all right guys so this toilet flange is the wrong way okay I don't know on camera if you could see it but there's a little groove here where the little bolts go and you can see that they'll be like right around here where my fingers are and toilets they have to be on the sides so the toilet's supposed to go right here and this event will before at some point the toilet went this way and then they opened it up for a shower and they never fixed the flange so the flange is still meant for a toilet to go this way and when I moved into this house the toilet was actually just cocked to the uh, floor to the vinyl that was here so let me show you how I how I'm gonna fix that. Let's put this in as if we're installing the toilet. Okay. Put this one in. More gloves too, because yeah, this is pretty nasty old. It's an old house. And okay. So as you can see the the problem that I have here, <laughs> I need the bolts to be lined up on this side so the toilet can go this way. So that's where this flange comes in handy here. And if you need to, if it's not straight, because I'm not straight yet, you should be able to turn it a little bit. Just get the little nut, pop it on. And I'm putting tile in, in here, so I got a half inch plywood down here over some 1x6 baseboards, planks. And then so what I'm going to be doing is, it's going to be a little low, but that's okay. Because I'm going to be using a, a wax ring that's a little bit higher. But don't worry about the nut, the height of the nut shouldn't be an issue. These things are meant to be cut off, so all you do is uh, tighten it down where you want it and then get a you know a little hacksaw. That's one of the things you'll find in old homes when you have, this is a cast uh, iron flange and it's in good shape. If it was bad, I would have to replace and that's kind of a pain in the butt uh, to do. But this way, it, you know, for, for $8, you can fix, um, change the toilet position. All right, you don't have to cut all the way through the bolt. You can do like halfway and then get a hammer and just hit it. There you go. 
So what I did was I did six inches around the perimeter all the way around and then about one foot over one foot one foot to get in the middle and that should be enough to keep that secure. Some people like to glue these down but then if you ever got to do the floor again it's going to be real hard getting the plywood up. All right got the other little skinny piece of plywood in there put the screws all around and I was just test fitting the tile. What we're using is a granite 12 by 12 with a marble 12 by 12. All right got a quarter inch hardy backer first one put down inch and a quarter backer on screws right there it pretty much tells you where to put them a little indentation there uh, I'm thinking I don't like the way they drop the ceiling it's gonna be a ton of work but I mean look at that I don't know if you can see on camera but this window goes a little higher than where they stopped the wall the ceiling I mean, if they would have just raised it, I don't know, it looks like four more inches, it would have been at least flush with the top of that inside of the window and it won't look so bad. And so there's a little gap in there too. You could even see that there was scrolls or something in the attic at one point. It started chewing up the wood here, trying to get out, and they had a piece of wood just kind of bolted up there. This ceiling's probably, I don't know, 10, 11 feet tall. And yeah, they probably did it to keep the heat down, you know, but the the heat a little lower and get it warmer in here faster but I think another four inches six inches even wouldn't have been such a big deal to go up a little higher so what I'm gonna do today long story short and that was a long story of it I'm gonna go and uh, take this uh, crown molding off and start breaking this ceiling alright remove the molding up on top the heater duct and this thing all right, so I ripped off a couple pieces of the plywood, or not plywood, but the sheetrock. And there is uh, ins fiberglass insulation. And you can see that the ceiling is like, I don't know, like less than a foot up from there, maybe eight inches. And you can see there's a something there, some wood there. Anyways, I'm gonna rip out this other side. And you can see how they had it with the wood. It's just little, what is it, one by twos that they nailed to the wall. All right, so there's the uh, other ceiling, which is just some kind of veneer. Okay, the real ceiling actually goes up another four feet from that. Okay, with the light. Okay. There's the actual ceiling up there, the real ceiling. Alright, so I started taking that all down. Just have the beam in the middle now. And then over here, you have these beams that were here going down into the floor because this was an add-on to the bedroom, the shower. They took from the bedroom to add the shower. And you can see they cut the beams. I don't know if those are structural or not, but then what's done is done. And then I started taking this... Uh, sheet rock off here because I'm going to put my hardy back here for the shower and you can see what they put inside <laughs> the ceiling tiles and I guess the uh, oak floor that was here they bolted it onto the wall too I guess this person didn't want to waste any of the material from the house I guess I don't know probably gonna rip this whole all this sheet rock off because this is not even green board sheet rock it uh, it's not water resistant it's just regular sheet rock and the shower is going to be here uh, I am going to be putting, you know, tile up to a certain point, but then I'll probably have just regular sheetrock after so high. And all this is crap, but you can see the texture that they did. It's, <laughs> they didn't know what they were doing. I tried sanding, it's, it's really hard, so I'm probably just going to rip this sheetrock, all this whole wall, this side. Alright, today I'm back working on this upstairs bathroom. It's been a while, a long while, since I made a video. I had other projects I was doing so what I'm doing now is I'm taking down this uh, I already took down the lowered ceiling it was sheetrock it was about right here I took it down and then you could see I got another plywood ceiling very thin plywood so I'm taking that down and you can see from here it's like three more feet of ceiling and then this wall here was the, the extension that they did the shower 
because this originally was part of the, the bedroom. Okay. So that's what I'm doing now, it's taking this other ceiling down. And I'm going to decide where I want to, if I'm going to leave it really high, which is 11 foot ceilings, or if I'm going to lower it a little bit lower. All right, here we are with that, that board off, that second ceiling, which is just thin plywood, very thin. Okay. You can see they had some little wainscot, wannabe wainscot, and some trim, and some wallpaper up there. Now I just got to think, do I want to leave it all open like that? Because this is a very small bathroom. Uh, it's only like four and a half feet wide and a little over 13 feet long with the extended part. Uh, you can see originally it was stopped here and then they went into the bedroom, took a little bit out so they can add a shower. All right, got most of that uh, trim that was up around here taken down. And I found this uh, electrical wire that was hanging from the, from the attic here from way up there. And it was still active and it was just dangling there so what I went up in the attic and I disconnected it from the junction box yeah this this wire is coming from up there too and this was the wire that they were using uh, for the fan light so I have to go and uh, rewire that somewhere else because it's just dangling from the ceiling all right guys the next video that I did was kind of boring so I just fast forwarded it here I ripped down that ceiling that lowered ceiling and I had to reframe it. You see I, right there, I reframed it. And yeah, it was a lot of work. I had to put insulation in the walls and re-sheet rock the outside of the walls. And it was just a lot of insulation, a lot of cutting. As you can see here, I'm just, this is eight, eight speed over everything because it's just kind of boring. So I just skip it through it real fast. You can see what I did. And I put some uh, framing over the door on the outside and then I put some baseboard on the outside as well. Try to figure out if I wanted the old one or if I want to put new trim on that part. And then I decided to uh, fix up the plaster walls because they were looking pretty bad. I used struck the light as a base coat. Yeah, and that's yeah, and then I started worried about the trim. And I used a belt sander on it to, to get all that old trim off. Or old old paint off. It was lead paint too. Yeah, it was pretty rough those windows. And this is me just using a belt sander. And believe it or not, I didn't wear a mask there. I don't know why. Pretty stupid of me. All right, and that's me uh, replastering the ceiling and getting my duct ran through that ceiling. And I had it airtight so no mice or anything could get through there. So I had it real tight and real nice around there. And I had one electrical wire that I ran up from the top. Yeah, so the rest of this video, I just skipped through it because it's kind of boring. I'm just blabbering on about what I was doing, but it's really not that important. Just add the insulation, redo your electri do your electrical all over again, run all the wires where they need to go, depending on what you want. And yeah, 